Uncle Jobson Neb, life, prosperity, and health to you. This is the introduction to the Husia. And uh, it is one of the holy books of Wose Community Church. It's uh, one of our main holy books. We use three others, Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams, Stolen Legacy by, by Dr. George G.M. James, and 2000 Seasons by Ayikwe Arma. And so uh, rather than uh, go through a whole uh, explanation of how we uh, came about using that book, I wanna just jump right in to the subject and let's talk about the Husia. The, the book is called Selections from the Husia, Sacred Wisdom of Ancient Egypt, and it is by Dr. Malana Karinga. And here's Dr. Uh, Karinga, a picture of him. He's the author of, of the book. And Dr. Karinga, doc, uh, Dr. Karinga, Malana means master teacher. He's the chairman of African studies at Long Beach State. He's the author of the African-American ce celebration known as Kwanzaa. He's also an author of several books, including the Husia, the book of the coming forth by day, and the Odu Ifa, but he has many other works um, that he has out there, including Introduction to Black History. I think, well, it might be Black Studies. Anyway, in our introduction, now the Husia is organized into seven sections, the books of creation, books of prayers and sacred praises, the moral narrative, books of wise instruction, books of contemplation, Declaration of Virtues, and Books of Rising Like Ra. The Husia is taken from two Kemetic words. Kemetic, uh, the ancient land uh, that most people know as Egypt, uh, that's in the Nile Valley, they didn't actually call, that, call it that. They actually called it uh, Kemet, which meant the black land. Uh, so, the Husi is taken from two Kemetic words, which are actually Neturu. Uh, Western scholars called them gods. The first one is Hu, H-U, and here we see it uh, written in uh, Medunetur. And uh, Medunetur is uh, the words or the language, uh, the name of the language that was used by our ancestors along the Nile. Uh, Medunetra means God's words or God's language. And so who is, is here in, in this glyph? And it means authoritative utterance. And Sia, and here we see it depicted in Medunetra, means exceptional insight. Husia, who and Sia are aspects of Ra. And here we see a depiction of Ra. He's in his sacred boat. And uh, here he is written here behind him. Actually, many times when it's written like this, it's Atun or Aten. But here, this is Ra, and we can always tell it's Ra because he's depicted with a falcon's head and the sunburst uh, in, in, enclosed in a serpent. And he, here he has his, his, his tools, the Waz staff, etc. Now, I want to say a few words about Dr. Yosef Ben Yekinen, affectionately called Dr. Ben. Originally, the Husia was livicated, not dedicated, but livicated to Dr. Yosef Ben Yekinen. Dr. Ben, as he was affectionately known, was a well known historian, professor, and lecturer of African history. Uh, he lectured extensively throughout the country and around the world. And one of the questions that he posited to uh, his audiences was, was, where is your book? And what he meant by that was that the so-called major uh, Western religions, three major Western religions, had their holy book. You know, the uh, Jews have their book, the Christians have their book, the Muslims have their book, and he would look out into the audience of African people, and he would say, where is your book? Where is the one for African people? And so Dr. Karinga answered this challenge, and this is included in the first edition of the Husia. And at some point, 
a disagreement took place between these two um, great scholars. Dr. Karinga then levocated the Husia to another great African scholar and historian, Dr. Sheikh Anta Jop. And here's Dr. Sheikh Anta Jop of Senegal. Um, he was a historian, he was an anthropologist, a physicist, a politician, and he studied the human race's origins and pre-colonial African culture. Uh, Dr. Jope argued that there was a shared cultural unity across African peoples. He taught that this was more important than the varied development of different ethnic groups shown by differences among languages, culture, and cultures over time. And so he actually wrote a book called A Cultural Unity of Black Africa, where he, he connects the dots, the similarities between those on the east coast of Africa, those on the west coast of Africa, those in Central and South Africa, those in North Africa, particularly Kemet. So he connected all the dots. As the title of the book states, it is selections from the Husia. There's so many uh, comedic texts that one book would not be enough. We'd have to have like a whole library uh, to, if we wanted to contain all the, the comedic texts. So this is just a sampling of the uh, text uh, that was um, uh, pictured and uh, preserved uh, in this book, Husia by Dr. Karinga. So the books of Noinka of Creation show the story before the story before there was a creator. It deals with the concept of creation before humans or netters who are powers of heaven, before they were created. And we deal with this concept called noon. And this was the primordial ocean of which everything comes out of. And this is how it's depicted. These squiggly lines uh, actually representing the uh, consonant N. So the new is the primordial ocean. It was before the world was formed, before what was said to come into existence. There's something that the ancients along the Nile called the noon. It is before the universe. It is the netaru. It is, it is, bef it is a, a fluid ether. It is the generator of the netaru and the rest of creation. So all of creation comes out of this uh, Fluid ether. Noon is uncreated. Everything emerges from the noon, including the creator, Neturu. The creator, Neturu, emerged from the noon. It is uncreated. It is fluid ether. It is very opaque. It is dense. It is compact. It is the cause, the reason, the foundation, and home of all subsequent becoming. So our ancestors we're dealing with this, the actual uh, creation before the creation. The story, as Dr. Asa Hilliard once said, the story before the story. And I'm, I'm borrowing from other scholars. Dr. Theophia Obinga uh, gives us this definition of the uh, uncreated fluid ethereal liquid, the opaque, dense, and compact. And he wrote about this in his uh, Egypt and Black Africa and uh, African philosophies, the Pharaonic period. This is how you write Medu Nature, uh, excuse me, noon in Medu Nature. Uh, this cup here that, that holds liquid, this is uh, a, a, a tea. And this here, this glyph represents the sky. And this, how, this is how you would write the noon in Medu Nature. Now, who are the Neteru? You heard me mention Neteru. Neteru are um, divine powers representing uh, powers of the Creator. They are extension of the Creator. So here we have Amun, we have Tehudi, we have his uh, 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 counterpart Sheshet, we have Wasir or Osar or Osiris, we have Aset, Asase uh, or Isis. We have Heru, their son. We have Set, their brother, who represents uh, 
a, a balance. He's the opposite of good. He's not the devil, but he's the opposite of good. And then his counterpart is, is Nebhet. And here we have uh, Anpu and Am, Amset. So these are di different depictions of the netters. And when we look at the netters, they are, are you usually can tell it's a netter from just a, a, a ordinary human being because they're carrying uh, the waz staff and an ankh. They're either carrying one of these two to designate that they are netter. And I'd like to say, uh, as I'm going on, that you know everybody has this debate about the N word. I would like to propose that netter be the new N word. So instead of using the N word that that has a history of slavery and degradation, let's start calling each other netters. All right, that's my little preachment. So originally, the word netter meant the awakening of higher consciousness within the primordial essence. The image of God who reveals himself in the noon for the purpose of acting, doing, creating, guiding humanity and the entire world. Created beings extend the creator's creation daily. So isn't that a better word to be called than the uh, N-word? Continuing on what the netter, netteru is the plural form. Netteru are the infinite multiplication of primordial energy emerging from creative matter. Westerners, Western scholars refer to the Neturu as gods and goddesses. They don't, they didn't understand the complexity of uh, the, just the concept of, of Neturu. And so they looked at them and said that they were gods and goddesses, but no. So when our ancestors talked about nature, and here, here we are, this is how you would write Neturu as, as plural. There's a debate on whether that these are axes or actually flags. There's uh, equal um, uh, information to support both um, uh, theories, but uh, be that as it may, this is how you would write Netur. You would write it singularly for one and in threes for plural. Now, the Netter or the Memphite theology or the creation stories uh, come out of this stone, and it's referred to as the Shabaka stone. It takes place in the 25th dynastic period, uh, which is also referred to as the Nubian Renaissance. Shabaka was the Per'ah. I'm using that word Per'ah because that is what the ancestors used, they didn't use words pharaoh. Just remember, in, when we're referring to our ancestors, that the, uh, there was never a place in the ancient times called Egypt, and there was never a man in the ancient times called pharaoh. He was called the per'ah, or head of the great house, actually representing the woman. The woman was the, was the head of the great house. He set on the throne by virtue of his connection to her. And so this is the Shabaka stone. And it refers to something that, that, that uh, scholars call the Memphite theology. Uh, Mamphi was one of the ancient names or Heku Pata. Actually, that's what uh, the Greeks, when they say Hoi Egyptois, they were trying to say Heku Pata. But this is the Shabaka stone, and as we, and this is the Per'ah Shabaka. The Shabaka stone, as I said, dates back to the 25th dynastic period. It's also referred to as the Nubian period or the Nubian Renaissance. It's taken from an older work which dates back to pre-dynastic times or conservatively 4,100 BC. And this is, when you get up close, on the Shabaka stone, this is what it is saying. This is, you know, this is how it is written. It contained within the stone some of the oldest writings about creation. It also refers to an aspect of creation called Pata. And here's Pata. Sometimes he's referred to as Lord of the Blue. 
His name means self-created. And here it is in Medunetcher. It's very simple. P-T-H, Pita. And when you see a figure like this, this is a netter. And here he's holding the Waz staff. The twisted flax uh, strongly resembles the DNA structure. So when we look at, at that, uh, let me go back. So when we look at that and compare it to the structure of DNA, it's very similar. The ancient comedic people viewed creation as a continuous process. It wasn't something that happened way back then in the, in the Big Bang. Creation was completed was repeated each day in, in nature and in human history. And so these sacred texts predate the Hebrew, the Christian, and the Muslim texts by millennia, by thousands of years. So in conclusion, that just gives you a background of what the Husiya is. Uh, it was a, a 30,000 foot view of, of the book uh, referred to as the Husiya. We hope that you will tune in uh, for the next few e-courses related to the Husia. And as in closing, I'd like to say to you, Ankh Ujab Saneb, life, prosperity, and health. Live up.